Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. Thank you for chasing me all those years, Lord. All those years out in the wilderness, Lord. But Lord, before the foundation of the earth, you had my name written down. My brothers and sisters here, you had their name written down. And they made a choice. What a choice. It's the choice of eternal life. We thank you for the life you've given to us, Lord. You've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you for the light, Lord. And thank you for your anointing tonight, Lord. Just speak, speak, let only your words come through, Lord. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Choice. That's the word I'm going to zero in on. Choice. All of life is a choice. Even coming to that altar that time. Actually, this is just about my birthday in the Lord. My birthday in the Lord is July the 3rd, 1978, Libertyville, Illinois, just north of Chicago. So in two days, I'm 37 years old. <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. I'm going to get to that a bit later. I inherited a daughter called Brenda, and it was really due to her. Actually, she ended up in hospital in Chicago. She was in ICU. They used to call her BJ. And I said, well, what does BJ mean? They said, well, you're going to find out. One day I walked in the room, and there's smoke all over the place. And uh, they were smoking pot. They said her name is Big Joint. It looked, looked like a trumpet. Brenda. Brenda's my stepdaughter, okay. and uh, she, she used to be a model, fantastic personality, but she got very sick and she ended up in ICU in Chicago, and I didn't know how to pray, I wasn't a Christian then, but Sunday prayed for her, and she went down to um, Arkansas, uh, and uh, she stayed with some born again Christians, and guess what, she came back born again, oh, yeah. <laughs> and man, She's a good personality anyway. She, she used to come in, I would sit with my beer there, and, and she said, Dad, Jesus loves you. <laughs> I said, okay, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and she just loved on me and loved on me and loved on me. And she got to know a few scriptures, God so loved the world, and he loves you with an everlasting love. He's never going to leave you or forsake you. She kept this up, she kept this up. And I did listen, I did listen. And then one day she said, listen, I, I'm going to a prayer meeting tonight, uh, Friday night, could you take me? So I said, okay. So I, I drove to this prayer meeting. I lost my way because it was sort of north of Chicago. I got lost and I, I, we came into a big, huge church. It was in a Catholic school. It was a gymnasium. It was packed out, about 200 people there. And I mean, they were, they were having a great time. They were playing the music. I thought, man, there's going to be some drink around this place somewhere. They were really, really happy. I didn't realize it was the anointing of the Spirit. Yeah, so. right, but uh, I, I, all the words I heard through the years, it, it was just like, this is the day I'm going to hear the good news. And the, the guy, he wasn't a Catholic, he was a, he was a Brit. Looking back, he was one of the most anointed men I've ever met. His name was Bob Johnson, skinny little guy, about 60, two of that, full of the Holy Spirit. And he was just speaking the Word of God. He was speaking the Word of God. And uh, it touched my heart. And he gave the order call. I said, yes, Lord, I believe. And everybody freaked out. I thought, what are you freaking out for? Hey, man, man, you, you, you're accepted in the Beloved. And, and the angel written you down. You're going out. I thought, my God, what have I done? I just lifted up my hands and I believe in Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Uh, I'd only just got to the stage at that time. And they didn't take any notice of any uh, British credentials. I had to start from scratch, so I didn't have a GED, so I was taking GED to get started. So I was taking care of old guys, old Jewish men um, on the lakefront, very rich men, just to take care of them. But uh, uh, and I had a Bible given to me, it cost 25 cents. And most of the day I took care of this, this old man, I dressed him and he slept most of the time. So I got the Bible and I started at Genesis. And I was on that job about five weeks and I read the whole of the Old Testament from Genesis through Malachi. And it was an easy to read version and just handle the land of this. And the Lord, at the very day I got to the end of Malachi, the job stopped. 
the Lord gave me that five weeks to read the Old Testament. And I read the New Testament later. But I just had a hunger for the Word after that. It's, it's, an, it's never left me, is the hunger. The hunger, just loving the Word of God. And the Lord made a choice many years ago before the foundation of the world. He made that choice. Can we have that scripture up, Joshua? Matt? Yes, Joshua 24, 15. He said, if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you are going to serve, whether the gods which your fathers served were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you were. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Could we say that together? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's try it again. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's try Ephesians chapter 1. This is about choice. It's about choice. The, the, the amazing thing is that before the foundation of the world, according as He has chosen us, He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. That is mind boggling. Before, you were talking about the creation of the world, Don, and how amazing the Lord is. He knew us before the foundation of the world. That is absolutely incredible. That we should be holy and without blame before him. When he looks at us, he doesn't see what we used to be. He sees Jesus. He sees the blood. Amen. When he sees the blood, he passes over us. We're pure, we're holy. We're the righteousness of God in him. He predestined us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And why? It's to the praise of the glory of his grace, where we are made accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. I mean, well, that's mind-boggling, man. We're accepted because of his blood. When he looks at us, we're pure, we're holy. It's absolutely nothing to do with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For grace, everybody knows this. If you don't, you're in trouble. You get ten spanks. <laughs> but grace are you say through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is why we're here, for we, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We're not saved by good works, but when we say we do good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So as we choose to serve the Lord each and every day, it's a daily choice. It's a daily choice to walk in His ways. He blesses us and He anoints us. I know every day I've got to say, Lord, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But it's not I, but it's Christ who lives in me. Christ, the anointed one. I can't do anything. It's only Jesus. It's only Jesus in any of us. Once you start thinking to you, man, you're in trouble. It's Christ in us. The whole glory. John 15, 16. The Iron Man know this one. If they don't, they're in trouble with Big Bill. <laughs> and he is big. <laughs> you should have seen him in He's got a great ministry, right? Okay. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. The word is choice. And ordained you. He's pointed the finger at us. That we should go and bring forth fruit. Amen. And that fruit should remain. Whatever you shall ask in my name. In the, ask the Father in my name. He will give it to you. He will. It's a promise. It's a promise. That's why we're here now. We're here to bear fruit for him. But we can't do it without the power and the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn to Psalm 139. We don't have that one. I'm going to read it out. 139, James, 139. This talks about the God who knows everything about us. He only has, he knows everything. He's omnipresent and he's all powerful. This, this is the one who knew us before the foundation of the world. What an awesome God. I remember that song and pray that he had God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Lord, you search me, and you've known me. You know my down sitting, 
In my uprising, you understand my thought far off. You've compassed my path, my lying down. You're acquainted with all of my ways. For there's not a word on my tongue, but, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You beset me behind and before, and your hand is upon me. He knows everything. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I can't attain to it. And he's omnipresent. Where shall I go from my spirit? Where shall I flee from my presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning, dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me, your right hand hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light to me. The darkness hides not from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. You've possessed my range, you've covered me in my mother's womb. And Jeremiah talks about it, that too. Before you were in my mother's womb, I knew you, I sanctified you, and I made you a prophet to the nations. I separated you. And going back to my testimony, that I was born in World War II in London. That gives my age away pretty well. But uh, hospitals were full, and my mum was trying to find somewhere out me. And guess what she found? She said, put her in the Salvation Army. <laughs> and so every baby that's born in the Salvation Army is prayed over. The sisters, the doctors. And uh, I was telling Pastor David a little bit earlier, that prayer lasted for 35 years. It was a very good prayer. What I went through, I came from a family, nobody talked about Jesus. I, I didn't know anybody. The only guy we knew who was religious was a Jewish man around the corner called Ben Davis. Nobody talked about it. The only time I heard the word Jesus was his cursing. But the Lord, before the foundation of the earth, he, he, he put his finger, he pointed his finger, just like he pointed his finger at you guys. He knew that you were going to come to him sometime. And um, I, I sometimes heard about uh, Jesus uh, at the assembly. He still, he still um, spoke about the Lord in uh, schools at that time. And I, I went to the Boy Scouts. I thought, well, I want to go on these camping trips. But it was at a Methodist church. And uh, they made us sit in there. And, and uh, I, I heard the preaching. I remember where I used to sit. I saw on the left side of the, the pulpit was over there. And I remember one preacher I remember particularly uh, was an American preacher. And I know now, looking back, that he was spirit filled. And I thought, oh, there's something different about this guy. I really. Do you know that and I, there's key people in your life, and he was one of them, that the spirit of the Lord in that man touched me. It touched me. And I remember to this day, I don't know his name. And there was another uh, school teacher called Mr. Clark. We were out on a field trip. And it was night, and he, he was just looking at the stars. He said, look at those stars. Isn't it incredible? Where did they come from? He said, there's got to be a God somewhere. There's got to be a God. There's got to be a God. And we looked. And I, I never forgot that. But it's these little seeds. It's little easy. And this is what the Lord wants to use us for. It's, it's not always preaching the word. It's just an example. And it's just an odd word. He's got people out there for you to touch. He's got people. And you're going to be a key people in someone's life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And um, I, I, I love... At the end of the year as Boy Scouts was I picked up a saxophone. <laughs> and the, the, boy, the Boy Scouts uh, went out the window. And I started a little dance band um, in the London area. Uh, I was working as a, an apprentice draftsman. But that bored me stiff. So I joined the British Army Band, 17. And uh, they said, uh, okay, you want to be a musician, but we're going to train you to be a soldier first. <laughs> so they went throwing a rifle around and all this stuff. And I spent uh, three years in the Middle East. But we did play sometimes. But uh, I came out that band and uh, I took an audition for the ships. Uh, I was only young, I was 20 years old. and. Uh, a guy couldn't make his ship, so I, I got on a, a ship that left London docks, um, a four-piece band, and the ship it, uh, went out to Australia and the Far East, and it was five months. And that, that started a sort of career in music. Um, I worked on the ships, I worked with rock and roll bands, all sort you name, circus bands, every sort of band you could imagine, mainly on sax and clarinet, and I did some bass guitar after that. But, you know, I just worked, there was something inside 
There's a God-shaped vacancy in us. Yeah. I was just never, never. It was, I was going around the world, seeing these fantastic countries, Australia, and I was around the Caribbean for several months, west coast of the states, going up to Alaska, Japan, Pacific Islands. You know, we went all around the world. It's P and O ships. They, they just go everywhere. But I wasn't satisfied. Rolling Stone song, no satisfaction. But that is a, is a God-shaped hole in it. And only, only Jesus can fill that hole. And I wonder, Matt, if you could get that picture of Messiah right there. It was an amazing miracle. The very last trip I did on a ship, they threw a, a, a three-piece band out to Athens. The port of Athens is Piraeus. And this ship uh, went to Crete, it went to Istanbul, and then the first time I've ever been, it went to Israel. And it stopped in the port of Haifa. And this has never happened either. That the, the cruise director said, well, would the musicians like to come on a, a trip with the tourists and come around? I said, yeah, man, we would go away, sure. So we, we got our bottle of wine and sat there and enjoyed the view. We, we went to all the places, uh, Jerusalem, uh, uh, to Nazareth, all the places that I thought one of these places really exist. And the, one of the very last places we went to was a huge rock beside the Dead Sea. It's called Masada. And then if you could show it, um, it's I'm, a. I'm trying. All right, let me read about <laughs> it. You been there, John? Not that far south. Let me read, this is a little bit of a track I wrote about it. Anyone wants to come to God must believe there is a God that he rewards those who sincerely look for him. Yeah, yeah. We've got to be sincere. Like a vast ship two and a half miles west of the Dead Sea lies a rock called Sandra. It's 2,000 feet long, 1,000 feet wide, 1,300 feet high. It towers above the searing heat of the Judean wilderness. It was on this rock that King Herod built a fortress in 40 BC. Masada, pardon me, to escape his enemies in Israel. Herod picked the northern shady end of the rock to have his three-tiered hanging palace built. And it was on this uh, rock that the Jewish zealot, well, there it is, there it is, together with 960 of his men chose to commit suicide rather than be ta taken captive by the, the Roman legion at that particular time. It, that, that's incredible, that they committed suicide, rather. And when the Jewish troops, even to this day, when they graduated from training, they take them to the top of Masada, and then there are a word, I can't say it in, in Israeli, maybe you can, and they say, remember Masada. But they make a pledge. They make a pledge and they remember this Masada, that pledge that they made, that they die rather than be taken captive by the Jewish legions. And I prayed a prayer up there, I was going through a lot of withdrawal from drink and stuff like that. A lot of stuff going on. I said, uh, why am I here? What's the point of this life on earth? I cried in desperation. If there is a God, show me and help me. Deliver me. And that was the beginning. It wasn't instant, but gradually things started to change. One little prayer. And two years later, I'm fast forward. I was married in Chicago. Now, at this time I was living in England. I was married in Chicago. My first wife was in heaven now was a born again Christian. And her daughter that I talked about a bit earlier was called Brenda. Brenda. And incredible. That that prayer that was made in the Salvation Army, I believe, it encourages to pray for people because the Lord does answer the prayers. Even if it takes thirty five years, he comes through. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. Even today we've had two miracles with the prayer group that we've been talking about. Thanks for that job for Donna, Father. Yes. Thanks for Larry. Rolling Stone. Rolling out of there. Chester. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And since then, uh, I did a lot of ministry, but the Lord opened the door of the Bible College in uh, Dallas called Christ for the Nations. I think you know where he is, Pastor David. Just not long, far from Baptist College. And then the Assemblies of God College in Waxahachie, Texas. And I did two years as a student, and they put me four years on staff with the music staff. 
which I had a ball. But people kept coming up to us and saying, hey, brother, why are you supposed to go back to England? I kept getting words all over the place. You've got to go back to England, the Lord's so I said, well, I don't want to go back there. But uh, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed, and uh, the Lord said, you're going back to England. So eventually we went back and we worked as uh, missionaries at a church in Liverpool. And my first wife was American. She couldn't understand it. But after, after three, and the Lord used, used it greatly in that area, especially in the deliverance ministry. And, uh, I thank the Lord that he's, he's opened these doors and even ended up in Georgia as a miracle. Even coming down here, the, the, the Lord just opened the doors and Arlen and Twyla, the daughter and son-in-law, said, this house has been vacant for 80 months. Come down, come down. And I've seen those open doors, open doors, open doors. And I give the Lord praise for it. So what I'm really saying, even from this point, just choose every day. Choose every day. You're going to serve. We're a chosen generation. Yeah. We're a royal priesthood. And I was talking to Jim the other day. One of the most important things he's given us to do is to pass on the baton. We, we've got Christ in us, and he's going to put people in front of our lives. He's going to use us. All that experience we've had, even just to be an example, even just to say, I love you. Like we go around the Sunday store with a donut. I love you with the love of the Lord. It means so much. And people look at you. The last job I had in England, uh, the guy started swearing and cursing. They said, oh, no, be careful, Mike. He said, I said, don't worry about it, man. It just goes in one ear and there. They see, they see your life. They see your life. It's a great thing. Just they see Jesus in you. Even my mom, when she came to the States the first time, she says, Michael, what's happened to you? She said, you look so different. I said, no, I, I got Jesus. I, I've accepted the Lord. Guess what? She came to church that Sunday and she ran forward, man. Wow. <laughs> she was 65. She ran forward and, and she died at 93. But man, did the Lord use her. She, she just, uh, she loved the word, she, especially younger women, they used to come around the house all the time. She wrote a lot of songs too, they played them in conferences and stuff. So, I just thank the Lord for, for all you, you guys, and that's my word today. Choose whom you're going to serve. Choose, love him, adore him, he's never going to leave you or forsake you. And if there's anyone who's really not sure where they are with the Lord tonight, if there's anyone, this, this is a good time to choose. Because if you do choose, he's never going to leave you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Or just, just choose to, to rededicate your life in certain areas. So if you want to do that, I'm going to pray a short prayer. and Just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I want to just walk in your perfect will. I want to walk in your perfect love. Jesus, we love you. We adore you, Lord. We thank you for all of your blessings. And Father, we choose to serve you this day with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that all things have passed away, all things have become new. And in the name of Jesus, I thank you for touching my brothers and my sisters and anyone else who is listening. We thank you for touching. We thank you for blessing. We thank you, Lord, for the salvation, for the deliverance, for the healing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.